Let's move to Ohio State because Ohio State uh, made some news this week with some coaching moves. And, and this one was, I think, expected to some degree, but Ryan Day has uh, hired a new offensive coordinator. And he hired what many believe is one of the best young coaches in college football from his own staff, Brian Hartline. So Brian Hartline's now going to be the new OC at Ohio State. What does this mean? Why did they do this? What does this mean? Let me let me first go into just the specifics of like, why would you do this for Brian Hartline? Well, that's a no brainer. This guy is a great coach. We see what he's done just as a position coach. There is no better position room in America than the Ohio State receiver room. And it's been that way for a few years now. The, the level of talent that he recruits, but then the level of development that that talent then gets under him is really unprecedented in our sport. Look at what he, I mean, look at the guys that have played. These are guys that have played in the room. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, Marvin Harrison, Julian Fleming, Emeka Abuka, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. If a wide receiver coach had one of those guys in the last four years, he would be walking around town like, oh, I'm a great position coach. Look at what I do in development and recruiting. I got that guy. I got Garrett Wilson. You know, I, I got Chris Olave. He's got six of them, but it's not just these six. He also just recruited and landed three of the top 61 players in the country and three of the top 10 wide receivers in the country. Brandon Ennis, Noah Rogers, and Carnell Tate. Like an animal. So we know Brian Hartline is an incredible coach. Okay, you know how I feel about that. So why would you do this? Well, one reason could be because he can help recruit more broadly now as an offensive coordinator than as just a wide receiver coach. Let me explain that for a moment. When you're being recruited, and granted, I wasn't recruited at a very high level, but generally speaking, what you see now is, is the coaching staff will, will give every coach a specific area throughout the country to recruit. And then you also have like your position group. So regardless of who's recruiting that area, if there's a great running back or a wide receiver, like you're obviously going to be involved in that, in that recruiting. Now, if you're just a position coach and you're not a coordinator or a head coach, then that's kind of it, right? So the most influence you can have is either in your area or in your position group. But as soon as you're an offensive coordinator, now every single offensive player that's being recruited by your program, you're going to be very involved in that recruiting process. You're going to be in the living room. You're, you're going to be making calls uh, to a much greater degree than if you were just a position coach. So we see what an animal he is getting receivers. And now you can spread that out across offensive linemen and tight ends and running backs and, and all of it, quarterbacks. And, and that type of dynamic recru recruiter can only help raise the level of all position groups on that side of the ball. So, so that's one of the reasons why I think many in, in the Ohio State community are suggesting that their recruiting could take a take a leap or, or a jump or make a move up, in particular on the offensive side, now that Heartline has that ability to get in all of those rooms and not just in the wide receiver room. Now, there are some other reasons why this might be happening. And, and no, I don't believe that this is just in title. I do believe that this is more along the lines of Ryan Day starting to evolve in his career and move away from being the play caller potentially and, and give Brian Hartline that opportunity to grow as a play caller and, and teach him and mentor him and grow him as a play caller. Now, why would Ryan Day do that? Well, first and foremost, you have to understand that's a tough decision for a guy like Day because he's an elite play caller, one of the best play callers in all of college football. It gives him an advantage, right? And and anytime you have an advantage as a program or a coach, boy, you hold on to that with white knuckles, okay? Because those advantages are really the lifeblood of what makes your program successful. So this is a big moment for Ryan Day. And yet it's something that I feel like he thinks is, is necessary. Well, let me run through some of the reasons why he might think that. First and foremost, 
in the modern college football, let's just call it the last 20 years, 25 years, it is exceedingly rare to crown a national champion whose offensive plays are called by the head coach. In fact, 25 years, I can only count one. Jimbo Fisher called the offensive plays for Florida State and Jameis Winston when they won the national championship. Outside of that, Chip came close, right? Um, Gus Malzahn came close. And by the way, that game, it was going to be either Florida State or Auburn. So we were going to have one that year. Um, it really, I mean, you got to go back to like the guy who really did it was Tom Osborne. Tom Osborne was his own offensive coordinator basically his entire career. He won those three titles in the 90s, Steve Spurrier. Uh, so it was very in vogue in the 90s, right? Spurrier and, and Osborne, I believe, won four straight national titles between them, if I'm not mistaken. And they called their own offensive plays. Since then, it's only been Jimbo Fisher. And we've had some great play callers that were on the offensive side. I always think back to like Mike Gundy had to go through this when he was a great offensive mind. And then he eventually had to, you know, move away from calling plays. Um, I, I just think it's one of those things like Lincoln Riley's having to deal with this situation right now. Like, USC, Oklahoma before it, and now USC are running up against the exact same problem. It's like, hey, your defense is not good enough. Your defense is not good enough. It's like you can only score so many points and gain so many yards without your defense being good enough. Well, Ryan, to some extent, is dealing with that as well because you could say that in the last few years, the, the weakness on the defense has really hurt Ohio State in big moments. It hasn't been their offense that has let them down necessarily. And so, so now Ryan can, can spread himself over the entire team. And he can now do what Brian Hartline can do, which is bring a greater recruiting emphasis to the entire team. He can spend time with more players from the entire team, which in the day and age of transfer portal is an important piece for every single head coach. And you have the, the, the fact, and this has been true for a long time, but as college football has grown, and the size of athletic departments and more specifically football staffs have grown. The support staff around a football team has grown. The more people you bring in, the more problems you have. Well, guess where every single problem ends up? It ends up at the head coach. You're basically, as a head coach, a magnet for problems. That's all you do. These guys, that's all they talk to me about is like, all I do all day long is solve problems, right? Like, and that's the least favorite job that they have. They don't want to be doing that. Ryan Day would love to call the plays forever, but he's stretched too thin at times. So, you know, he thinks to himself, I can keep Brian Hartline. He can recruit on the entire offense. I can groom him as a play caller. And by the way, I'm sitting on the headset on the sideline. So all those innate timing things in terms of calling a big play here or there, I can still influence that within my team. So the advantage that we have is probably still there because I'm so close, and yet we're going to gain these advantages in an ancillary way around the program. Those are all the reasons why uh, I think that this is happening at Ohio State. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.